All right. We're going to look at Luke, uh, several scriptures here. Luke 9, 30 through 31. Hebrews 11 and 22. You're just going to have to be fast, Scott. You got them? And 1 Corinthians, you, you peaked? Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Amen. I'm so excited about our move upstairs. Yeah. Amen. Uh, next Sunday will be our last Sunday downstairs in this facility. Uh, the first, May 1st, we will be upstairs. There's the gym up there right now. Um, but we will be occupying that space, and I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just going to be a blessing for us, and God's going to build our church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Luke 9, 30 and 31. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Hebrews 11 and verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Now you got no idea how these three verses, these three passages of Scripture tie together, but they tie together. They tie together. I, I want to preach to you today on the promise that is given to the church of His second coming. I want to give to you a message. I, I want to preach to you a message of the hope that we have that Jesus is going to return to take His church out of this earth and bring it to glory. But before it ever came to pass, there was the exodus. There was the exodus. And so I want to preach to you today on the subject, on the title of my message today, the exodus. The exodus. God, I ask you this morning, under the anointing and the power of your spirit, God, that you would move into this house, God, and that you would speak your word to us today. Help us to hear, God, in the power of your spirit today, Lord, your word, God, as it ministers to every mind. Open our minds and our spirits and our hearts to receive this word, God. And Lord, anoint me to preach this word today, I pray. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. This is mentioned in the writings of the Apostle Paul to his, his letter to the Romans in chapter 5, verse 12. Paul is discussing how sin entered into mankind. How that because of the of the disobedience of Adam, how that because of what Adam did in the garden, that sin from his disobedience passed upon every generation of mankind. We were all born in sin because of the sin of Adam. Right, right, right. Throughout the history of mankind, there has been the attempt of mankind to reconcile this sin. To bring mankind back into the relationship that he had in the Garden of Eden. And to, to be able to redeem mankind from that sin. There are written in the Old Testament uh, 
Bible, the regulations that God gave to Moses, that God gave to different mankind on how they were to worship God and the sacrifices that they were to bring to God somehow to deal with that sin. But Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4 gives us a peek into that, that, that offering that they would give. It says in Hebrews 10 and 4, it tells us, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. All of the attempts that mankind did, all of the sacrifices, all of the things that they did, never took away the sin of mankind. It was not possible to remit. That means to remove the sin off the record of mankind. It was not possible for those, the blood of bulls and goats to do that. So no matter how perfect the bull was, no matter how perfect the lamb was, no matter how perfect the offering, it could never take away the sins. Never do it. Every man from the time of Adam until the time of Christ lived in a state of unremitted sin. They had a history of sin that was on them and it could not be removed. Every man. The old system, according to the words of the writer of Hebrews, did not take away the sins of the people. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 tells us, for without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. We know that the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sins, but there had to be a blood that would remit sins. And so we see the generations of mankind are involved in slavery. Slavery to sin. The Bible says, to whom ye yield yourself servant to, to obey. That's whose servants ye are, whether of God unto righteousness or of sin unto death. Sin is, is slavery. It, it captivates the hearts and minds of people. It gets a hold of you and it, and it causes you to live a life that you do not want to live. Right, right. Nobody walks, walks out of uh, or walks into this world. Uh, uh, Melanie does not walk into this world with the idea that she's going to have a very destroyed life. No, she has dreams. She has hopes. She has ambitions, things that she wants to do. Every child does. They watch Walt Disney and they see Cinderella and it's a happily ever after. But that very rarely ever happens. Why? Because sin gets a hold of us and destroys our lives. It, it destroys our dreams. We become a slave to the things that we thought that we controlled, whether whatever it might be. You see, slavery is hopelessness. A slave has no future. A slave has no hope out of their situation. A slave has no ability to make their situation any better. You cannot earn enough money to get your freedom. You cannot make yourself free. If you're a slave and your owner says, I don't care how much you pay, you'll never be free. My friend, you'll never be free. You're at the mercy of the, the taskmaster. And so Israel... The nation of Israel became slaves. They became slaves. They were subject to slavery. They, they were made to be slaves in the land that they once were free in. And they were at the whim and at the, the, the beck and call of the Pharaoh. Whatever he desired for them to do, however he desired for them to live, whatever he wanted them to be uh, under is what they had to do and say so they they were ruled by the whim of the taskmaster and they were driven by the desire of the pharaoh but there was a a prophecy spoken generations before before they were ever ever slaves there was a prophecy spoken it said by faith joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of israel and gave commands concerning his bones. I read that in our opening scripture. Joseph said, we're going to leave this place. We're going to get out of here. I, I, I am an old man and we are a free people. We can do anything that we want, but there will be a day that we will leave this land. And when we leave this land, don't leave my bones here. Don't, don't leave me buried in Egypt. You dig my bones up. You take me out of that earth and you carry my bones with you when we depart this place. 
Joseph told them, you make sure my bones come out of the grave and go with you to the land that God has promised us. The literal word, it was by faith that he talked about the departing. But the literal word there, the word departing in the Greek actually means exodus. That's what that word means. So Joseph, when we read this word, by faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the exodus of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. The literal word there is exodus. So, so Joseph spoke generations before and he said, when there is an exodus, you make sure I go with you. You make sure you dig up my bones. You make sure my bones don't stay in Egypt. Joseph declared that there would be a day that Israel would have a highway to which they would go out of Egypt. You you see, Exodus is a word which literally means a highway out of. The word Exodus in the Greek means a highway out of. Joseph was saying, when God makes a highway out of this place, You make sure I go with you. When God makes a highway out of here, you make sure I go. And so Israel were made to be slaves in the land, land, and generation and generation and generation passed. And they lost hope of ever having anything concerning an exodus. In fact, I believe, it doesn't state in the Bible, but it's just my belief that they, they forgot even about the fact that there was going to be an exodus. But one day there came a voice of hope. One day there was a voice of hope. A man by the name of Moses came to promise these people freedom. He came to promise them a way out of the slavery that they were under. God was about to free his people. Moses, through many signs and wonders, gained the liberation of Israel. And on the last night that the Israelites were slave in Egypt, on the very last night before the liberation, God told the Israelites, there has to be blood. You have to take a lamb. You have to sacrifice that lamb. And you have to take the blood of that lamb. And you have to dip a uh, 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 hyssop in that blood and you strike the doorpost on the sides and over the top of the door with the blood of that lamb. You put the blood of that lamb on your doorpost and you stay in your house. And on that night, the Bible says, God went through the land and everywhere that he saw the blood, everywhere that he saw that blood of that lamb, he passed over that home Everywhere that he did not see the blood of the lamb, death came to that home. Everywhere. It was the blood. They had to have the blood. The blood caused God to pass over that house and to give that house liberty. And it was on the next day that the highway out, the exodus out of slavery, the exodus out of bondage, the exodus out of a life that was full of debauchery and full of slavery. The way out came by the blood. The way out came by the blood. They walked out the very next day, out from underneath that blood that was over that threshold into freedom. The way out was created. The way out was made because of the blood. blood. After the blood, the exodus would begin. Mm -hmm. On the morning of their liberation, Israel left on a highway of exodus. They traveled a road that would lead them from the path of slavery. This way of freedom brought them away out of their past and into a brand new beginning. This was the way that Moses, led by the Spirit of God, would lead everyone that followed him. It was a way to liberation, and none of them had ever gone this way before. In our opening text, we read another passage that has the exact same word exodus in it, but it's translated into our English as a different word. It says, And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, 
which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. This word decease is actually the word exodus. It actually means exodus. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his exodus, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. We have here a conversation between Moses, Elijah, and Jesus concerning the exodus that Jesus was about to accomplish. There was a way out. There was a highway that Jesus was about to accomplish. There was an exodus that he was about to create that had never before ever existed. There was a highway that those who would follow him out of slavery, out of bondage, out of the things that they could not get out of into a land of freedom and of liberty. Moses and Elijah spoke to Jesus concerning this exodus. You see, Israel wanted an exodus. Israel at that time greatly desired an exodus because the Roman government controlled everything that they did. They were not a free people. They did not have the freedom to do whatever they wanted. The Roman soldiers walked up and down their streets. The Roman soldiers determined where they could go and where they could not go. If they wanted anything done, they had to go to Pilate or or to any of the governors or to the king. They had to petition somebody higher than them. So they were subjugated unto the Romans. And boy, did the Israelites want an exodus out of that. Man, they wanted out of that Roman rule. They hated the Roman rule. They hated everything about it. They needed a Messiah to take them out of the Roman rule. And so here is the Messiah, the king of the Jews among men. The Romans... Exodus from them seemed like something very natural that you would expect that that Jesus would do. The exodus would have been the removal to the Jews. The exodus would have been the removal of the Roman government out of their land. Freedom from Roman slavery. That was the thought of those that followed Jesus. That was the thought of those that followed Jesus. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Will you at this time set up your kingdom? They came one time to take Jesus by force and make him their king because they wanted him to overthrow that Roman government. We got, we're done with those guys. We, we want our own. They wanted an exodus. We want a Moses to take us out of this Roman government, Roman rule. We want an exodus from it. Acknowledging him as their king to remove them from the Roman rule was easy. Getting out of the Roman rule, get us out of there. Get us out of the Roman rule and and you will easily be our king. We'll make you king right now. You you just get him out of the way. You get all that junk out of our way. But the exodus that Jesus would accomplish was nowhere near the thought of these Jews. It wasn't even close to what they were thinking. What he was about to do was so far removed from their minds what, what the exodus was about to become was completely lost to everyone, even the disciples, had no idea what this exodus would be. Because the, the, the question has to be asked, how can a cross be an exodus? Sister Lane, how can a cross be an exodus? That, that makes no sense whatsoever. You see, a cross is an ending of a pathway. A cross is an end of everything. A cross is the finality of all the things that are supposed to come to pass. A cross is the end. It's the end of the exodus. It is not the beginning. It's the end of the exodus. All the crowds gathered that day to witness the end of this king of the Jews. They mourned his passing. They were gathered around his cross and they weeped and they wailed at the, at the end of what was their every hope. All of heaven peered over the banisters of heaven looking down upon the earth to see what would happen here. This was the exodus. This 
was supposed to bring about liberation for all mankind, freedom for everyone. But we're watching as he is being crucified. At some moment, he will come off that cross. At some moment, the angels will come down and and retrieve him from that thing. And he will be victorious and glorious and they'll crown him king. No. Every man that ever lived was under the curse of sin. Every man that ever lived was held bondage by the plague of sin. No one had ever been freed from sin. No one had ever been freed from sin. Here in the grave was the power of sin. Here in the grave itself was the power of sin. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Understand that. Sin, the sting of death, is sin. And the strength of the grave is the law. The grave looks at the sin and says, you got sin on your life. You ain't coming out of here. You got sin. You're not coming out of this. I, the, my strength, my power to hold you here is the sin that's in your life. My power to keep you here is the sin that's inside you. The sin that's on your record. You cannot come out of it. I don't care how good you thought you were. I don't care how how nice. I don't care how much money you gave to the poor. I don't care anything about it. The sin that's in your life will keep you in the grave. It will keep you in the grave. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. The law said you have sinned. The law declared you guilty. The grave held every man in its clutches. You have to go to the grave. There isn't anybody. That's the thing about life is you never get out of it alive. You never get out of it alive. The grave is the end of every person. There were people that were resurrected from the dead. Lazarus was resurrected from the dead. He went back to the grave. It's going to get everybody. Every man who ever lived is held captive at this time by the grave. Jesus hung upon the cross. He was moments from the end of his life, moments from the clutches of the grave where every man will find himself. All of heaven and earth is clinging to this very moment. And then Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. How astonishing are these words? How astonishing. Declared in the hearing of of this crowd, it meant a lot of different things. To the religious rulers of the day, it meant we finally got rid of this guy. All of the time that he poked us, all the time he made fun of us, all the time he got under our skin, we finally got him in the grave. We finally got his voice shut. We shut his mouth. We have taken away his influence. He can't lead the rebellion against us anymore. When Jesus said, it is finished to the religious rulers, oh man, that was music to their ears. That was a beautiful thing for for Jesus to say because now Jesus is no longer going to be there to mess up everything that they wanted to do he he was gone it meant the end of all that he had tried to do it is finished to hell it meant the riddance of the one that had tormented them it meant the end of the one that had walked around and cast them out it meant the end of the one that they found themselves every time they were in the presence of jesus every time they fell on their face and they wallowed in the dirt they couldn't stand in the presence of jesus they were so fearful of him every time they got around him they 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 cried out Please don't torment us before our time. Oh, oh, please don't, don't, don't cause us more trouble than we've already got to hell. When Jesus said, it is finished, it meant, oh, we got no more tormentor. We got nobody else to cause us trouble. We got nobody else to, to rule our kingdom. That's what it meant to hell. When he said it is finished to his disciples, it meant the end of everything. This was their everything. They they gave up their lives. 
They quit fishing. They, were, they quit tax collecting. They, they quit being whatever it was that they were, and they gave their lives to follow Jesus. And when he said, it is finished, man, it was the end of everything. Every hope went to the grave with Jesus. Every dream went to the grave with Jesus. Every ambition that they had went right to the grave with Jesus because they did not expect this to happen. But to Jesus, but to Jesus, it was the exodus. It was the exodus. It is finished. And the sky grew black that day. In the middle of the daytime, it turned completely black. And the earth shook. And the graves came open. And people walked out of the dead. Dead people walked out of the grave. And the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. On the day that Jesus said, it is finished to Jesus. It was just the beginning. Because here came the exodus. And down to the depths of hell, down into the grave went Jesus, only to make an exodus out of it. Revelations 1 and verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have, and have, and have the keys of hell and of death. He came back. With the power of the grave, Jesus is he that was dead and is alive forevermore. He went down to hell to pay the penalty of sin. He went down to hell to open up the doors to those that were captive in hell. He made a way out of hell. He made a way out of the grave. He went down, but he came out. He went down, but he came out. He did not stay in the grave. Hell thought it had found a great victory. Hell thought it had brought about a great victory that day. But hell had no idea that in the midst of their partying in hell, in the midst of all of the hullabaloo that was going on for them and how excited they were that they had shut Jesus' mouth, in the midst of their party, walked in Jesus Christ himself. And he opened up the doors of the gates of hell. And he took from hell the very keys to their kingdom and he came out of the grave and he made a way he made a way he made a way he became the first fruits of those that would come out of the graves he was the first one to come out of the grave and never go back to it never go back to it never 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 go back to that grave and so he made a way out of the grave it is finished it is finished Jesus blazed a pathway for every believer, for every person that is born of the water and of the spirit, for every person that has repented of their sins, been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus made a way. Jesus rose, making the grave powerless to hold those that follow him. Any man cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ is free from the bonds of the grave. You have to understand this. Go back to Israel in bondage. Go back to that place. How did they get out, Brandon? What what gave them the right to come out of that slavery? It was the blood of the lamb. It was the blood. No blood, you don't come out. No blood, you you, you keep your bones right there in Egypt. The blood brings you out. The blood gave them freedom. The blood of Jesus Christ brought redemption for mankind. It is by, then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of your sins. For the remission of your sins are remitted. Your sins are forgiven, remitted, taken away, off your record. The blood of bulls and goats had no power to remit you of your sins. No power at all. But the blood of Jesus Christ does. And the blood of Jesus Christ can remit your sins. Take them off the record. You know what? I would love it if somebody would come and remit my bank account. Remit it. Oh, my house loan, you don't owe it no more. 
My, my, any debt I have, you don't owe it anymore. The, the, the boat loan, it's gone. I would love remittance because what that is, is that you don't have that on your record at all. None whatsoever. It's not that, oh, we've got it back there somewhere. We can see it. No, no, it's remitted. It's gone. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that can remit your sins. And remission comes, according to the Bible, in baptism in the name of Jesus. He made a way out. He made a way out. Slavery is over. The exodus was made. You are brought out of the slavery through the exodus of Jesus Christ. You are, not, you, you are no longer an alcoholic. You don't have to be bound to alcohol. You don't have to be bound to drug addiction. You don't have to be bound to these things. God can get a hold of any man's life. We have testimony of those right here in this service today where God got a hold of you and God changed your life and brought you out of addiction and brought you out of all of the things that held you slave. How did Jesus do it? By his blood. By his blood. He brought an exodus. He brought hope. Slavery has no hope. You get in this world and the people out in that world are so full of hopelessness. They don't know where tomorrow's going to take them. They don't know what tomorrow will hold for them. They have no idea. All they know is that the past has not been good and the future does not look any better. And they don't know where to go. And they don't know where to turn. And they don't have an idea of what they're going to do. But my friend, when you align yourself with the world, of God and you get under the blood of Jesus Christ then you walk in a place of liberty and God directs your step and you come out of slavery and you have hope you have hope every prisoner that is in Wildwood today the hope that they have is not six more years in prison the hope that they have is not another time in jail the hope that they have is not getting out of jail and going into some rehab place no there is no hope outside of Jesus Christ you can take somebody that has been the most violent person and the most drug addicted person and you can watch Jesus get a hold of their life and change them in a moment in an instant and people that had no hope, and people that had no dream, and people that had no ambition, you watch them as God just changes their life, completely changes their life. There is so much power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is so much power in the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. He can break any addiction. He can change any life. He can change any life. Can we stand here this morning?